All right, Matt, hold the phone as I drive. It's against the law in Georgia. It's Dean Luggy and uh, Matt DeBerry, another edition of Riding Home. We're we'll going to wrap up Pro Day today. I think a lot of the talk will be Elijah Holy Fields ran a slow time. Um, someone just texted me about that. I don't think we got confirmed times or anything like that. A lot of unofficial times out there. Yeah. Elijah definitely is not a test type of guy in these situations. Yeah. The game film speaks for itself. He outran a whole bunch of Florida Gators two years ago. He's got some game speed, but when you're running in a straight line, a big kind of muscular guy that he is, he has lots of arm motion going on. It took him a while to really get going. By the time he finished the 40, I think it was another 4.8, maybe a high 4.7, something like that. Well, Kirby's big thing today, and, and Kirby's an advocate for these guys, understandably. Right. But Kirby was saying, hey, there's a lot of film. On, on on these kids, you know, and, and and basically what he's trying to say to us is, don't be so, you know, constrained by a a straight line test. However, he and Kirby's right, but there's also this a nuance of, okay, you know, this is a test. We're gonna see where you are on a scale. And not only that, we're going to see if you can improve even nominally. If you make a jump from Indianapolis to your pro day, that means you've honed your craft. That means you're a worker. That means X. So you get bonus points for that. Isaac Nada was somewhat, I guess, in the same situation. Um, I thought he had when, the one of the best days out there. He did improve his time a little bit, caught the ball well, looked a little more smoother than he did, if, if that's a word, than he did in Indianapolis. I thought Isaac had a pretty decent day today. Well, let me, you know, the thing about it is that um, for us, you know, as spectators while you're there, we notice a lot of nuance that perhaps people who are watching on TV or NFL Network or SEC Network, and they both were there and had um, some stuff that the rest of us didn't get, that if you're watching as a consumer, of, of the television, you are going to see stuff that we don't see. And um, like you will have data that we can't see because we're not elevated. We're on the field. It's tough to see particular things. And of course, then again, we can see things that they can't. And there's a lot of people there. Lots of scouts, there lots of college a, coaches. I would say close to a thousand people today. Yeah. Is yeah. that, you think that's right? Bill, Bel Bel Bill yeah. Belichick, Dimitriov. I'm not a Falcons guy. So Dimitriov, Belichick. Uh, Lots of Steelers. Plenty, I was going to say there were a lot of Steelers. Lots of Lions. Talking with Miko Hardman. Yeah. Miko, the two guys that jumped out to me today were Miko Hardman and Jonathan Ledbetter. Jonathan Ledbetter because of the way he did one particular drill. Miko, just because you look at him and go, this guy's a freak. Yeah. What kind of freak is he? Is he a, is he a useful freak? And I think, see, what the kids don't know having done this for a while is when the coaches are coming up talking to you that they're doing the scouts coming up talking to you they're doing that not because they necessarily are going to draft you or not because they're not going to draft you they're looking they 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 touch people a lot i don't know if you've ever noticed that they touch them on their hands or shoulders sometimes i've seen guys get slapped real hard or they ask the kid to slap them real hard uh i remember ben jones's pro day he about wore the guy out and yeah. the guy was good with it. He wanted it. So I, when I saw, I mean, Ledbetter, I think the issue, knowing some people a little bit in the NFL and people who have covered the NFL and cover it now, I think the question with Jonathan is, what position does he play? Yeah. And He's that's a little tough. tweener in the NFL. Because he, can, he, can't, he can't run around like a normal linebacker in the NFL. So no. that's, a, that's a question with Jonathan. And I think his 40 time was – below average compared to other defensive linemen too but he does look the part he looks you know like he was in shape he was flexible he went through the drills really well you could see on at least to me you could see the the either angst or the you know the moment is here for Isaac Nada yeah I've seen Isaac Nada since he was 16 years old and of course, you cheer for the kid because, well, I, I like him. I mean, I think he's a stand up guy. He's been pretty normal yes. most of the time. But this is a big moment. This is a moment that's bigger than people like me and you buying a house or a car. Um, this, is, this is a moment that you, if you have competed, 
that you have there's there's basically two things that you do as a professional football player one is the combine the other is the super bowl everything else in between is just work so this is as big a day as it gets for these guys and you could tell maybe with the exception of deandre baker who was like ah i'm good yeah. you know i seem okay everyone else uh and they were into it i think they all most for the most part had a good day isaac told us that he was not happy at all after his performance in indy he was all smiles today after uh the pro day here in athens so i do think he helped his stock a little bit and we'll talk about deandre baker a little bit now baker was fun um he didn't wow you with anything. He's not the fastest DB out there, but length, instincts, and game film is what's going to stand out with him. And he probably it looks like late first, early second round for Baker. For Baker, probably will still slide into that late first round and probably be picked to a really good team who needs uh, some cornerback help. But he had a good day. Nothing great. Nothing wow. But no one had a terrible day like last year with Trent Thompson and Dominic Sanders. We didn't see any of those type of performances today. So, Well, and and I, I, again, I mean, I like both of those guys a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I, Dominique went to the same high school I did. So. That was weird, though, last year. That but was. as it turns out, neither of them got on with an NFL team. Right. So people, like, you don't want to make too much of it, but you don't want to dismiss it completely either. I mean, there are reasons why standardized testing by and large is correct and if you're not a good test taker you're not a good test taker it doesn't mean that you can't be successful in life but it it is an indicator it is one dot on the line that you have to you know sort of look out for and 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 so forth so with all of these you know dots that we're getting today and in indianapolis etc they will fit into the profile that will go along with these kids film and um i i I don't i mean you could today could have been we didn't see a single first round guy that's possible although it does seem like baker will go in the first round most of these guys are going to be sort of average nfl players and there's nothing wrong with that those are millionaires well they might well yeah in theory they're they're millionaires and you know, there's there's Nick Moore. I think walking with his parents. No one knows who Nick Moore was, but he was out there today. So uh, guys like Jarvis, uh, Wilson Jarvis Wilson, yeah, did. Jason Stanley. If you look at these guys without any of their film, yeah. not knowing who they are, Jason Stanley is one not, of the guys, that, especially a receiver who pops out. He ran like, really well. He's got a good well, who size. Is this, who is this guy? You know, yeah. he's big and he can really run. There were a lot um, of scouts. His, his bench was not yeah. ideal, but it's right. bench. When he ran that forty, especially the first one, you could see scouts look at each other like who's this kid again chris mortensen told me when i was 23 the espn reporter is a very nice guy there was a kid who had done something like 45 reps of 225 or some crazy number he wanted to play at at, uh, at uh, auburn and i said that's pretty amazing isn't it he said yeah you know what it is but can you tell me the one profession where you make a living on your back? And I said, message received. <laughs> but it again, it is. It's, it's not that it doesn't matter, and it's not that it matters so much. Today, for Dean Leggy, not an NFL scout, not an NFL reporter, the guys who had days that were, you know, ideal, I think you could say, were, it seemed like to me, Ledbetter, Miko, Baker. After that, I don't know that someone had a, quote, bad day. I don't know that people had good days. People are going to shit. This is what you all, expected. People are going to shit all over Elijah. Yeah. And that's fine. But this day in Indianapolis, I'm not so sure he could should have come back. I mean, I don't know that I buy that either. But we get to that point where I always thought he was going to leave. And it, it might work out for him. But, you know, today was... Really what good. I'm saying, yeah. I, I may have. Said, I want to be clear about what I'm. I don't necessarily subscribe that he should have come back. The way I said that just there was a little bit clumsy. I'm not. I mean, everybody, everybody, all of a sudden is is ready for him and Nada to have come back. Isaac Nada wasn't coming back, man. Right. I mean, he he's an older guy. He he's been around the block. He's he's 
I mean, I think he's a very smart kid. Same thing with Elijah. These guys are intelligent guys. Um, but when it's time to go, it's time to go. Kirby, too, another, you know, point, and Kirby's right more often than he's wrong, is these teams are going to get younger and younger. These teams are going to have three years and out. Like, for instance, Trevor Lawrence. He's not getting developed at Clemson. He's going to be there for three years, and he's leaving. Right. That's it. And you see a lot of these guys, that 2016 recruiting class. And, and, and by the way, really... Jake Fromm will probably leave right. next year. Today makes me think, okay, Jake Fromm's going to leave. Isaac Nauta left after uh, junior year. Meikle, Riley Ridley, uh, and Elijah. Those are four guys from that 2016 recruiting class. Yeah. You're probably going to have maybe more guys next year. Uh, come out, we'll see. Uh, Jake, as you said, Swift, Fromm, Andrew Thomas, uh, Isaiah Wilson. So it should be another big day here next year. Might be able to see some more first-round picks. But today was really big for guys like Terry Godwin, who easily just gets forgotten about. He does. Because because as, as really solid a career as he had, this is a five-star kid, and he will get drafted. But he is I, – I even hate to say the word, but he, Terry is average yeah. when you look at the NFL. He doesn't look the part like maybe Riley really does. He's not as fast as me, Cole, or Jason Stanley. Right. Uh, but he's he not catches, as big as Julio Jones yeah, no, or A.J. He's, Green. He's not I mean, the biggest guy, not the fastest guy. He is a really guy. good college receiver is. that is not going to scare anyone in the NFL. And that is the challenge for guy, for the vast majority of people. Again, if we don't get off standard deviation, if we, if we are – dots along the line, not sort of some crazy thing where you need to go into a regression analysis. Basically, these guys are what you think they are. Yeah. Basically. Na- Nate Travis Patrick, exactly who he is. Juwan Taylor, exactly I mean, are who those they guys going to get drafted? Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not. And Natrez also has strikes against him for the yeah. off-the-field stuff. Yeah. So, let better should. Let, let better will be. Let better should. Let get better will, Baker will get drafted. Ledbetter, well, De- Baker, Hardman, Ledbetter. Uh, I'm trying to think of other people because uh, uh, DeAndre Walker, who did not go today. Um, so I think they, they will have guys that will get drafted. But as always, there are guys that will not get drafted. It will just be, you know, how do they fit with the team they go. Ben Jones, third round or fourth round draft guy, he's had a career. A second contract in the NFL. I love Ben Jones personally. It is not a surprise to me that he's still in the league. He was drafted. Guess who wasn't? David Andrews. Same, essentially the very yeah. similar players. Not exactly the same. Similar players. One was drafted. One was not drafted. One is is, and they're both going to be career NFL centers. What so, about the, Lamont? We didn't talk about I was, Lamont. I was just going to bring that up. I mean, what about the the center we saw today? I mean, uh, Lamont had a really good Georgia career. I don't know how. I mean, these days also are about. It seems like we get focused on the shiny objects, which yeah. are the, you know, the. The, the skill we never talk about offensive line. Well, it's tough at pro day to talk about offensive line. Well, and and again, if you watched, you, you, this definitely was not on television. But like, if you watched Lamont being discussed and uh, handled by the offensive line coaches that were there, I mean, they had him stretching and asking him to continue to stretch forward and forward and forward. I wanted they wanted to see how flexible is this kid. Um, can he absorb? Can he get out to the second level? They want to see it all. This is, you know, how this is, man. Yeah. I mean, you've been in scouting for, yeah. uh, you know, at a lower level. You've been in scouting. You want to look at a kid. You and I talk about this. You legitimately are a scout. You got like you and Chad, etc. Uh, you know, y'all look at kids, and well, we all look at kids, but y'all look at them and you say, ah, uh, you know, I'm concerned about. X. Yeah. Chad used to love little ankles, with with good reason. There's always something that you know we we look at first and all that. But Lamont's a guy who came in as a defensive lineman. He, he's was, had a great hell of a college career. career, and he will get a shot in the NFL. With in the NFL too, a lot now, a lot for not just now, but over time, it, it's a salary cap game. Yeah. It's how much can you get out of these draft picks in their first four years if they're not first round guys? How long can you? How much can you get out of their first five years? You look at a guy like Cam Newton, number one overall pick. He's breaking down physically. Yeah. 
and Cam has had a second contract, and he is a franchise quarterback. Yeah. And even Cam Newton, who has a particular style that's not conducive to sticking around forever, even Cam Newton gets run down. I mean, that's a big dude. And so guys like Lamont, whoever they're replacing, in theory, if they're replacing a franchise player, how long can they go for? That's why this really is. These are multi-million dollar decisions, not just for the kid, but for the franchise itself. They are investing in one year between, I would have to look at the numbers exactly, but between 15 and $30 million with all of their selections in the first year. Uh, something like that. That's their investment, and it depends on how high the first, the number one guy goes. I mean, if the number one, if your number one pick is getting guaranteed money for X, you know, it's, that number gets pushed even higher. So, these really are critical decisions that shouldn't be dismissed. The tape don't lie, but neither does the in-person touching feely moments. Um, I know I've rambled. But I have done this for a while now. And I, I fully understand I'm not an NFL scout. I'm not trying to act like I know more than I do. But you, you do feel for guys when they have bad days. But the truth is, we all have bad days in big moments. And if that is Elijah's worst bad day of his life, Elijah's going to be fine. Yeah. That ain't nothing. Yep. And same thing for Isaac Nana. And those two guys, I'll say this too, and I'll stop rambling. They're pretty mentally tough, that that duo. So they'll be all right. I don't I don't know Ridley. I don't know those guys like that. But Elijah Holyfield is a pretty tough little guy. Same thing with Isaac Nana. Those two guys are tough guys, mentally, obviously, physically. So if this is their worst day in life, they'll be fine. Real quick, that's a real good. That's a real good worst day. It is. Real quick to wrap this up, we did see other guys out there, uh, Kendall Baker and a few others, uh, a former Georgia Bulldog that we saw who was Tramel Tramel Terry. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to this, remember Tramel Terry, four star athlete out of Goose Creek, had some injury issues, wound up at Jacksonville State. He was out there today. It was good to see him. I'm trying to wrap this up because you're hungry. Well, well, I just saw we pulled up right. I don't know where we are. This doesn't we're look not like a Mexican anymore, restaurant. So we're going to – yeah, it's a gotcha. rest, it's, okay. yeah, I know my spots right. um, Overall, good day, Dean. Any last I, I don't know that it was a good day well, for, the, for, for the Georgia Bulldogs. I think it was a good day. No, because no one had a bad day. I guess that's the best. Well, well the say. question is, did Elijah have a bad day? Did a whole, uh, did uh, Nada have a bad day? I think that it will be categorized as a bad day because they didn't run the 40 as well as people want. Um, but if you're drafted in the fifth or sixth round with a team that you make sense with, it's not a bad day. You know? So it just means less money, and I, I don't think Elijah Holyfield needs tons of money. I don't day. think Elijah helped his stock. Right. I'm not sure DeAndre Baker helped his stock. Yeah, that's true too. I think Isaac Nana did a little bit. He, really? He had a better day today than he did in Indianapolis, and he said that a lot. He was all smiles after this. Yeah, he, he feels was, pretty he, good. He was okay with it. I thought he had a good day. Miko is I don't think he lost or helped his step. He's his a talk real particular guy. Yeah. He's a guy he's a guy that someone he's a gadget guy kinda. He is a guy that you gotta want that type of player. There's a few teams who are gonna really want him and yeah. a few that maybe the Steelers don't they need talk him, to, they seem to talk to him at all. A lot. It it does. So it, it was a pro day. Thanks for listening. And <laughs> it was a pro day. It, it we was can, a pro we day. We can confirm it was a pro it day. It was a pro day. Some good, some bad. Um, but it was a pro day. It was a pro day. Thanks for uh, listening to us, and we'll catch us up. Go to dogpost.com, D-A-W-G-P-O-S-T. Boy, this is a long one, 18 minutes. Congratulations. It was only half half rambling, but it's it was right. three-quarters for me. Thanks, yeah. y'all.